Exponential functions in graphs. At this point, we've learned the basic characteristics of exponential functions. We've learned how we can transform them using the transformations that we've learned from previous chapters. And now we are actually using these to apply to specific examples. So in the last video, I did this example where we learned where if I subtract two in the exponent, that shifts my graph right two units. And so we can see how most everything stayed the same, but the only thing that changed from our basic graph is our y-intercept. We want to do a couple more examples of this just to show you how all of the different transformations can affect the shape of these exponential functions. Okay, moving on to our next example, we have h of x is equal to to the x minus 4. And so the first suggestion that I have is describe how this graph can be obtained from the basic function of 2 to the x. And then we're going to use that to graph it. And then we're going to come over here and talk about our four specific characteristics. So I suggest that you pause this video and see if you can figure out this one on your own. Okay, so I see that I have this minus 4. That's the difference between my h of x and my f of x. And what does that minus 4 actually mean? If it's a subtraction, it's a shift. If it's on the outside of the exponent, which this one is, it's a shift vertically, so I think in a normal fashion. So I'm actually going to shift it down, and the number of units that I would shift it down is four units. So now to graph this h of x, I'm going to first graph my two to the x, because I know those points. I know I have an intercept at zero, one, one, I have a point at one, two, two, four, three, eight, and also points at negative one, one half, negative two, one fourth, negative three, one eighth, so on and so forth. So this defines my f of x, which is two to the x. Now what I want to do is I want to shift it down four units. So I take each of these points and I shift it down four units. And so now this red graph is the graph of my h of x, which is 2 to the x minus 4. Okay, so let's talk about our characteristics then, our domain. Every x value still applies. My range, normally my range is defined to be zero to infinity, but notice now my red graph goes below zero. Well, since I said my graph is shifted down four units, my range would also be shifted down four units. So my range is now negative 4 to infinity, which we can see. I have negative 4 to infinity. Those are all of the y values that are included. That should help us then with our horizontal asymptote. Notice my graph does not go below the line of y equal 4. And so that's what my horizontal asymptote is going to be, y equal negative 4. My y-intercept, I can do it by algebraically plugging in what zero is. Two to the zero is one, one minus four is negative three. So my y-intercept would be zero, negative three. Well, if I've already graphed this, I can just look. I see that it intercepts my y-axis at negative three. All right, so we have finished up this example. So let's do another example of the same thing. This one's a little bit more complicated, but we have learned all of the tools to be able to do it successfully. So I suggest that you pause the video and figure out how the graph of h of x, which is 5 minus 0 0.5 to the x, can be obtained from the graph of 2 to the x. So that's a big hint. This one should be compared to this one in a very easily manner. 
And then once you figure out that, you can graph it and find our four characteristics over here. So I suggest you pause the video and do this one on your own. Okay, so we need a little bit of manipulation here. The first thing that I'm going to do is change this decimal into a fraction. So I have 5 minus 1 half to the x. Okay, now I know that I can rewrite this in the form of 2 by flipping the fraction. So what math is going to resemble flipping a fraction? That is a negative exponent. So I can write this as 5 minus 2 to a negative exponent. And of course, my exponent is x. And so now it should be much easier to figure out how this h of x can be obtained from my basic function here. So if you need to repause the video again with this new information and complete it from here, I suggest that you do so. Okay, so we actually have three differences between my h of x and my basic function. I have this negative on the inside, which we included. A negative makes it reflect. If it's on the inside, it reflects horizontally or it reflects it over the y-axis. I also have this negative here. That negative is considered to be part of this a value, if I were to look at it this way. So maybe I want to rewrite this one more time. A negative 2 to the negative x plus 5 might make it a little easier on you yet. And so now if I look at this negative value, I know that it's still going to reflect, but this time it's going to reflect the opposite direction, reflect it vertically or reflect over the x-axis. I see this plus 5 here. A plus means a shift. It's on the outside, so it's going to shift it vertically, which means we're going to shift it up 5 units. Okay, so let me get my basic graph of 2 to the x on here again. And then we can adjust all of these specific points. So let me start with my intercept. Okay. If I were to reflect it horizontally over the y-axis, it would stay the same. If I reflect it vertically over the x-axis, it would go here. And then I would shift it up five units. So one, two, three, four, five from where my x value is. Okay. This one at one, two, my original point. If I reflect it horizontally, it goes here. If I reflect it vertically, it goes here. And then I shift it up five units. One, two, three, four this point. If I reflect it horizontally, it goes here. If I reflect it ver vertically, it goes here. And then I shift it up five units. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. My last one, reflect it horizontally, reflect it vertically, shift up five units. Okay. Now, if I maybe need to do some of my values over here, I have this one-half value. If I reflect it horizontally and then reflect it vertically and then shift it up five units. And maybe one more. If I do negative two and one-fourth, if I reflect it horizontally, it vertically, and then shift up five units. Now, let me get rid of all of these extra unnecessary x's that I don't need. And then hopefully we can see the shape of this exponential function. So we get that shape there. Okay, so now we can pick out the characteristics. My domain, I can still plug in every single x value. My range, 
This is going to change quite a few ways. Normally, it's defined as 0 to infinity. Definitely not the case here. Now, I actually flip it because now I notice I don't have any values up here, but I will always be defined below that. So I can define it from negative infinity up to it looks like right here. And so that is 5 which five makes sense because I should be shifting it up five units. Well, my horizontal asymptote is where my range stops in at y equals five. My y-intercept, I can very specifically list, look at the graph. And I can see that my y-intercept is at zero, four. If you don't trust yourself, you can always plug in zero, to your x value, and that would give us 5 minus 1, which would give us 4. And so there we have our new exponential function. Of course, you are always more than welcome to graph any of these, any of our examples, by using your graphing calculator or an app. And so if you wanted to double check yourself, I suggest by doing that. I'm going to use the Desmos app. So I have used my Desmos website, or there's an app, and I have plugged in, and I have plugged in exactly the original equation that was given to me, y equals 5 minus 0.5x, and I can see that I have this graph here. If you want to see your horizontal asymptote at y equals 5, you can just type that in as a second equation. So y equals 5. And I can see that my horizontal asymptote does match where I think my graph is. this over to see it a little bit better, then sure, go ahead and do so. Okay, so I believe that we have transformed this graph correctly. All right, I'm going to stop this video here. And in the next video, we're going to be talking about an application of exponential functions.